Conversation. Listen, I've been dreaming this up all week trying to figure it out. I want them to win so bad. Yeah, you know, we won. I just, I came from with my new job at Frank.
welcome on into Queeley Gymnasium as it's time once again for some Malloy Lions College basketball as they take on the Dominican College Chargers. Hello everybody, I'm Andrew Fertitta and what a treat we have today. Jason Fashina, uh, probably butchered, did I butcher that name after asking? Fashina, but Fashina, you're close Fashina, enough. Fashina, there we go. <laughs> and uh, Jason, we're looking at this Malloy College Lions team today. 0-5 to start the year. You're a, you're a basketball coach. What do you tell a team that's looking to get off the schneid like that? Well, knowing these guys since I, you know, recruited all of them, you know, was heavily involved in that process, they're tough kids. It's a real tough group. You know, after the last game, um, you know, being around the locker room, you know, most people would have their head down. Yeah, they're frustrated that they're on five right now, but they understand they're playing a tough schedule. You know, Coach Marquardt made it an emphasis this year to place a lot of people early on. You know, if you want to get in that large group, you got to play people. So even though they're losing these games, they're up in them, and they're really they're growing every day. So I really think tonight's gonna tonight will be the night they break through. But you know, we'll see how it goes. A lot of close losses for the for this Malloy College Lions team. Let's get you those lineups. Brandon Williams, number one at a Baldwin, New York, the 5'10 senior, 170 pounds, and number 13, Chris O'Reilly. We'll have a fun story for you as he goes against his brother, six foot, 170 pound freshman out of Colts Neck, New Jersey. Kevin Balls, number 15, the forward, and pulling down the tip off is number one, Brandon Williams, as we're underway. The Lions will move right to left. Here's Jalen Morris, top of the key. Back to Kevin Bowles, three-pointer, and it's good. Lions off to a quick start here, three nothing. That's great to see Kevin get hit that shot early on. It really helps out that Lions offense. We know all the attention will be on the Eminem boys, Mark White and Morris, and Williams dishing to them. They really got to get Kevin involved. And here's Sean O'Reilly inside, getting the layup to roll in as he goes against his brother. Here's Brandon Williams, top of the key. Mark White out on the floor as well. Williams hands off to Marquardt on the right wing. Inside the paint. Here's O'Reilly. Bowles, excuse me. Looking to back him down. And back the other way. Here's number three. Travis Cook inside. Dishes it out to number ten, Joe Clinton. He'll slow it down top of the key. Here on the left side is Travis Cook once again. Back to O'Reilly. On the right side is Clinton. Williams on the defense. Down inside is Will Wise. Trying to back down Bowles, and he is called for the travel. So it'll be the Lions basketball 3-2 is our score about two minutes in so far. Yeah, um, you know, besides the O'Reilly brothers, we also have an interesting story. You got Marquardt and Morris going against Clinton, all, both coaches' sons on both sides. So we got a whole, it's a whole family affair here at Quilly tonight. Family affair as Morris is inside on the left block. This is out right side to Williams. And tries to give back to Marquardt and almost turns the basketball over, able to retain it at center court. Marquardt pulls up, right side three, off that guy, no good. And Morris able to pull down the board. Here's Williams, left wing, driving inside. Here's Bowles, fighting around a couple defenders, can't get it, and Will Wise picks down the rebound. Yeah, those are those chances early on that right now you can see the Lions had two opportunities to go up early. And it kind of stayed at e at you know at three two right now, and it's giving Dominican a chance you know to stay in the game. Here's you know that killer instinct. Absolutely, here's Wise backing down Bowles once again, and it's a back and forth affair three to four. Left side, Marquardt had 19 first half points his last game. He was really feeling it. Definitely was. His footwork was much better. He was setting on his shots, and when he gets going, the, that rim looks real small. That hoop looks real small, that is. Runner from Williams, no good. Back up with it is Morris. And a scrum underneath the basket coming up with it is Cook. Dominican College in their red jerseys with white number. Inside is Cook. Back to Will Wise. 16-foot jumper. Nothing but net. And Dominican pulls out to a 6-3 lead. Yeah, but you know what? The Lions got some good chances. They just got to execute a little bit better. You know, they're inside getting easy right up opportunities that they're just missing out on. Here's O'Reilly for three. Off on iron, no good. And the O'Reilly goes. A couple shot attempts so far. The senior going against his brother. The junior. Uh, the freshman. Me, the freshman, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, uh, going against the senior on Dominican. Here's Quinton driving inside. Takes it himself. Off back iron, no good. Williams looking to push up the tempo. Morris all by himself. Sends it down with two hands. Yeah, that's what the Lions want to do. They want to score in transition. They want to get that ball out and get Morris moving. And they're running four guards. The lone forward on the court. And Morris 
Just that athletic ability that we've seen for years here at Malloy. Straight away, three-pointer from O'Reilly, no good. And the rebound is Morris once again. It's crazy how you say years. Time flies. I feel like yesterday he was a senior in high school trying to recruit him to come here. You know, and he's had a great early career, and the best days are still yet to come for him. Calling for the ball, but here's Bowles top of the key. Back to Williams. He'll take a three-pointer himself. In and out, no good. Two console play by Bowles right there, giving them a second opportunity. Williams fighting inside, can't get the layup to go, and Bowles once again fighting on those boards against Will Wise, the 6'9 graduate from Philadelphia. Kevin's done a great job early on being the only big man, really, with Chuck Saboon set off the bench going with this four guard look. He's really doing an admirable job inside. And Malloy r r works best when they're running up tempo. Absolutely, you know, especially with the addition of O'Reilly into the starting lineup, another shooter, you know, a guy who can handle the ball pretty good as well. They don't really want to be in the half court. They want to get going, running, and getting out for open shots. And there's Bowles with an air ball. We saw a little bit of the O'Reilly brothers going against each other that time. Sure, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. They've been going at each other since they were little kids, and now to do it on this stage is something special. You know, I spoke with Mr. O'Reilly last night, and he's wearing blue tonight and being very neutral about everything. You know, he's hoping for the first Division II tie ever. Most likely not going to happen, but, you know, a very special moment for him. Yeah, an Archie, uh, Archie Manning moment, maybe. Yeah, a little bit of an Archie Manning moment right there, you know, and it's, you know, it's a very special moment, you know, for a family to see two brothers going against each other. You know, I'm sure it would be a little easier if they were on the same team, but, you know, playing at the Division II level is definitely a special moment for him. And a little no bit, he was uh, Chris Mullen's point guard in high school. Wow. So, O'Reilly, it's a basketball family over there, you know, it's it's through the bloodline, so it's not, not really a shock that, you know, both ended up playing at the college level, so... And here's Darrell Irvin, the leading scorer, gives it off to Will Wise, top of the key. And there's Sean O'Reilly once again. Malloy in there, switching man, switching this year, you know, moving from that 2-3 zone, playing more man with a smaller lineup. And now here's back to O'Reilly, takes a three-pointer, and it's good. Yeah, he could hit that shot. He was, I watched that on high school film when we were thinking about recruiting him to come here. He definitely hit open shots like that. 9-5 to five is our lead, about six minutes down into this first half. Looks like we got some subs coming in from Malloy, maybe, maybe a little more energy. I think Dominican has one coming in too. Mo Gaston looking to check in. The senior point, senior guard. Fun fact about Dominican: the last two years they're 0 and 12 and out of conference games. They're 1 and 5 to start this season. Yeah, you know those, and again, they're sim a very similar, you know, sort of schools. You're talking about academic-based schools that are usually teams are traditionally tough, and they play a tough non non-league schedule. You know, for the CAC and ECC, it's really difficult with the NE10 perennially getting six teams into the tournament. Usually, got to win your conference tournament to get in that large bid. You got to play the good NE10 teams, and you got to play the good CAC teams if you're an ECC team. So it's really hard. Back to O'Reilly, a three-pointer off for an iron, no good, and Dominican controls on the back end. Dominicans really settled in defensively, not letting Malloy get out in the fast break. It's out of the key. Here's Cook, left wing. Now down inside. Here's back and down is Jarrell Irvin. Look at, look at the work Bowles is doing inside, though. He's given how many inches to him? I mean, that that's definitely admirable. Unlucky call there. It'll be Dominicans ball underneath. And you've been with this team for a while. Is this one of the smaller teams that uh, they've had? I mean, we had Tyler Hammett, you know, for, for four, you know, I was a manager, and then for three years we had Tyler. And then we had Rich Zoller and Miles Prentegas. So this is the smallest team we've had, but in many ways at times we weren't as athletic as teams, so now this is a more athletic group. That's a timeout on the court from Malloy. So, so far, five to nine, back and forth battle, but... What have you seen that Malloy needs to pick up a little bit going into the I think they're making the substitution right now, the freshman Curtis Jenkins. They gotta get going. They gotta run. If you're gonna play small ball, you gotta get out and get easy put buckets in transition. If you're gonna play a half court, slow the game down against a bigger team, you better be really hot from the field because you're not getting those second chance opportunities in the half court. You gotta really get out and get easy opportunities to score. So look for the defensive energy to be brought in. Ten Jenkins will, will demand that and you know, let's see if they get some easy buckets in transition. And that's exactly what Dominican wants to do right now. He wants to slow down the pace of the game and bring the game to them instead of Malloy out run and gun. Absolutely, and it's such a weird thing because for the past four years, that's been Malloy. They've been the slower, the team that wants to play half court, play really skilled. Now, you know, Malloy's trying to be more athletic, and it's, you know, it's kind of weird how it's, you know, almost like, you know, back in the day. Inside, and it's good. 
So 11 to 5 is our score here. This is, you know, Malloy considers this group their more defensive group as well as 25 chucks Obunse, the shot blockers into bowl. So with Jackson, Jenkins, and Obunse, and this is their, definitely their defensive group that will look to score in transition. Here's Obunse on the right block. Gets the ball discharged from him, and Dominican comes up with a turnover. Looking for Cook on the left wing. Malloy has been uncharacteristically sloppy tonight. And now inside once again. And then they'll get the rebound goes up to Gaston. Ball comes our way. Coach has still got it. I still got it a little bit, you know. You know, I'm now currently coaching at Friends Academy, so you know, I'm still I'm still with it every day. Trying to revitalize that program. Yeah, you know, tonight was you know our first down league game. I'm real proud of the girls. You know, down 17 at half, cut it to two with two minutes left. Jenkins for two. There you go. That's that energy they need. Pretty turnaround jumper there from Jenkins as Roy gets on the board again after a 3-0 run. Yeah, Curtis was, you know, he was starting early, and then, you know, they kind of wanted to bring more energy off the bench. He struggled last game in his first game off the bench, but he'll get used to it. He's a, you know, all Long Island athlete in both basketball and football, so. As we said before, Bootsay with another block gets the Lloyd. The possession back once again, 7-11 to is our game. Eight minutes down, Andrew Fertitta alongside Jason Fasina. And... That's done. Looks like a 2-3 zone for Dominican. Oh, no. No. No, yeah, no, they're in the 2-3. And here's Williams, right wing. Morris, ball over his head, down to Jenkins. Turn around, jumper once again. He likes that spot, man. If they keep playing the 2-3, look for Curtis to continue to take that shot. Much more length when you have Curtis Jenkins on the court. Absolutely. You know, you had with Morris, Gatson, Jenkins. Those are real athletes that Malloy really hasn't had in the past all on the same court at the same time. So, definitely a different dynamic than in years past. Now inside here, Dominican, and he gets the finger roll to go in. See, the pace of this game right now is definitely favoring Dominican. It's slow. They're playing their zone. They're taking their time offensively. Malloy really wants to get out in transition. This is not what they had in the game plan. And after seeing the 93-90 to 90 loss to Assumption, Assumption was taking a lot of shots, and that helps the transition game for Malloy. Absolutely. Quick shots early in the shot clock. With the new 30-second shot clock, it sort of demands it. You know, Coach Morris, who runs the offense, you know, at Malloy for Coach Marquardt, you know, that's what he wants. He wants a lot of shots for his team and get shots up, but at the same time, if you're not making those shots, it could be a detriment to your defense as well. Here's Alpine King looking inside for number 32, Jarrell Irvin. Oh, Curtis, what a great block. And now here's Williams bringing it back up, trying to push up the tempo from the Lloyd, picks it out to Gaston, and see, looks like a lot of Williams has to take that to Marquardt. And here's number 25 with the Dominican pick up that go up to roll in. And here's the pace that we're talking about for Malloy. Curtis got, got lucky with one there, but that's definitely the pace. They want to go up and down, get easy buckets in transition, and then after that, have Marquardt trail and hit those three pointers, really get this crowd rocking here. You know. And Gaston will take a seat on the bench. And then it'll be Abunse, Marquardt, Williams, Morris, and Jenkins out there for Malloy. Marquardt inbounds it to Morris. Dominican still in the 2-3. Back to Marquardt. Deep three-pointer, and it's good. That's one way to get them out of the zone, is if Marquardt gets hot from three. Instant offense. My name is Charles Marquardt. It's a three-point game, 10-13, to 13, about 10 minutes left to go in the first. The key thing now is to get this turn over here, especially at the try. And there it is. Great. You know, Williams is such a crafty little guy. He gets in there. Gets a, he gets one of those a game on average. But he'll get a draw an offensive foul. And it's huge. It's huge. He does all the little things. That's why he's a two-year captain for this Lions club. Will Wise, the 6'9 graduate student from Philadelphia, checks back in. And Malloy able to get the turnover, looking to cut this lead either to one or tie. Here's Brandon Williams. Back to Morris. Marquardt, right corner. Back to Morris, straight away, three-pointer, and it's good. The m m boys are getting hot and queerly right now, guys. This one guy's crazy next to me. I, I like it. There we go. 13-13 is the game. Exciting, fast-paced basketball here at Queerly Gymnasium. That's exactly what Marquardt was looking when we were when putting this team together. An exciting group, a group that wants to get out. Now here's under the rim, number 33. Christopher Hargraves unable to get it. Dominican able to pull down the rebound. Now here's a jumper from 30, 60 feet out. Big rebound by Morris. Morris driving inside, two on one, and he gets it to roll. They're going to call an offensive foul. 
Marquette's definitely, Coach Marquette's definitely not happy with that call. Tough one, but it's one of those where, you know, the ref with the new rules and everything, you know, the refs that they're trying to adjust to the, the change in rule, which is now that you can't slide underneath, you have to be established. But, you know, I think there's still a little discrepancy there. And when you're fast pace, how do you establish your field? Exactly. There was one call in the last game against for the, for the, against Assumption with Jalen. Tough call late. They were up two or tied, and they called the charge on Jay, and it was a tough call, and it ended up costing them the game a little bit. 10 on the clock, 13 all good. And uh, Jason, you see from this team is that they're decent in the first half of the game. The point differential in the first half, they're plus five. But going to second half, they're minus 50. Again, you know how I, I said earlier about switching from going from a zone team to a man team being transitioned to half court? In the past, Malloy's been a second half team. We've been known for getting out to poor starts and then coming in and winning those tight games late. And it's kind of, you know, a little Jekyll and Hyde here. Now they're getting out to quick starts early and then kind of retreating as the game wears on. It's just getting establishing that killer instinct, which I know this coaching staff preaches to them every day. And they'll get there. They're still, you know. And looking for the turnover, and they get it. It's Brandon Williams giving it off to Jenkins. A jumper, and it throws it. Yep, this is what Molloy wants to do. They're going to speed him up right now as they are going to a little ball pressure here. A little 2-1, two, 2-1 one, two, one, it looks like. And here's Will Wise bounce pass to O'Reilly underneath the rim all by himself, and he's rejected from behind by Marquardt. That's when Charlie's at his best. Everyone wants to talk about his shooting. Charlie makes a lot of key defensive plays that go unnoticed sometimes, and when he's doing those, you know he's really playing well. It's the time he steals. Exactly. 18-foot jumper from Will Wise, no good, and Brandon Williams pulls down the board over his own man. Williams cuts inside, kicks it out to Jenkins, stutter step. Oh, he's, he's going inside. over them. He was trying to go over them there, Andrew. He was trying to bring the roof down. Sky Jenkins at Queerly tonight. O'Reilly gives it back off to Clinton. And I nice. see that's such a, you know, it's a, I, I, there's no other better word for it than a coach's son play. Like, it's a little play. It slows the game down. Instead of them getting a transition hoop, now they got to take it out and you get to set your defense. It's just those little things that Mark Watt does that everyone looks at his shooting. It's all the little intangible stuff. Left block is wise, trying to back down Abunse. Great defensive job by Chuck Abunse there, holding his ground. Now here's Mark Watt, transition three-pointer, off back out of no good. Morris with another tenacious rebound, puts it back up himself, can't get it to roll in. A couple of those in and out tonight. Morris is just so athletic going after those offensive boards. I've seen some crazy dunks that I, admit, I wouldn't think I would see walking into Division II gym, but he's got talent out of the game. He does, both of them do. We're very lucky, you know, they have the situation in that, you know, you have both their dads here. But that being said, Division II has become a Division One athlete at this point. Division One is your almost your professional athlete, so that's what's you gotta have Division One athletes to win at the Division Two level, there's no question. And it's three straight winning seasons for Charles Marquardt in this club. Looking for a fourth straight, but a rough start 0-5 and, and seems to be a better mentality here tonight, would you, would you say? I, I would say, I mean, if you look at all their games, they've come out and played well in those games. I, You know, you look at last year, they started out 6-1, and one, mm. and... I, you know, you would looking at it, you would say they were lucky to start that way because they got a couple of calls late. They got a couple of lucky bounces go their way. They just haven't got the lucky bounce. You know, they're playing well. You look at their numbers across the board. Two for two from Clinton at the line. 8.30 left to go in this first half. Here's Marquardt at the left elbow. He'll take the jumper himself. Another no hustle play by Charlie Hustle. Ah, oh, travel. And they call him with a travel, but... How important is it for a shooter to follow their own shot when you... It is, but I know Coach is big with getting, having guys back, you know, to stop that transition. You know, it, it depends on the spot, the angle in which the guy is shooting the ball at, where they are on the court, you know. But Charlie will sneak in and get a couple of those because everyone thinks he's just going to shoot and go back because it, it does look like it's going to go in all the time. <laughs> Here's Joe Clinton, left elbow stops. Gives it back out underneath the rim is Cargraves. Uncharacteristically, Morris can beat off the first step. And it's 17 to 15, Dominican leads. Williams slicing the defense, tries to get the layup off glass, no good. Brandon's got to settle down a little bit, showing some frustration there. He's an emotional player, he's an emotional leader, wants to win really, really bad, but he's just got to hone in and be a good example for the team itself. He's the point guard, as you can see, he's getting being spoken to by the ref. 7.53 on the clock, two point lead for Dominican and it'll stay on this side of the court for Malloy basketball. Yeah, Coach Marquardt's so good at these out-of-bounds play, out plays. They usually get a lot of good open looks. Here's Marquardt's stutter step. 
Back out to Williams. Williams driving inside. A little more control this time. Off glass. And in. That's huge. Brim staying in control. You said it right on the money there, Andrew. When he's in control, he's one of the best guards in this region. When he's out of control, he's just another guard. Here's Sean O'Reilly trying to back down his brother. Turnaround jumper. In and out. No good. Rebound to Jenkins. Yep, he definitely wanted that bucket. And a couple two steps too many for Marquardt, and it'll be a turnover for Dominican. Yeah, that small court Aquila, you know, it helps you and it hurts you. You know, there he was just falling out. He was just really too close to the sideline there. The best thing is the atmosphere. The low ceiling really gets the noise. In the Listen, a few years ago, and I'll give a shout-out to Mike Malinowski, who's probably watching our manager. We had the Mad Men with this place packed. You know, people screaming, and I'm sure as the year goes on, the students will be will be more into it as hopefully this team gets some more wins, and you'll get the, this atmosphere here. It's crazy. It's like Camden Indoor. Marquardt dropped, drove inside and was fouled there by O'Reilly. Fouls, six for Malloy, four for Dominican. Here comes Gatson in for Jenkins. Jenkins will take a seat. Very similar players there. Obviously, Gatson with the more experience. Both lefties, both really athletic. Now here's Williams. In front of the end, back to Marquardt, left wing. Gaston driving inside. Gatson's so good at hitting that gap. Three pointer from Williams. Oh, see, that's what, that's what Brandon's settling right there. Brandon, when Brandon's hitting, shooting the three, he's settling. He knows he's got to be going inside, then take a three and open after the ball swung around. Now here is back to the way is Dominican. Giving out to number 30. Alton King inside to throw over, no good. And picking up the board is Gaston. They'll slow it down back to Marquardt. Marquardt, too many dribbles. Get rid of it. There you go. Charlie's best off two to three dribbles max. Doesn't need to be doing the whole in between the legs. That's not his game. Two, three dribbles. Here he is coming off a double screen. Williams giving it off to O'Reilly, right wing. Brother on defense. Stops his dribble at the right elbow. Back to Marquardt, left wing. Now inside to Agunse trying to get it over Will Wise. And oh, that, 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 that move for Chucks and being there every day. He works on that so much. And he's so close. And it's just, it's not it's not coming together. But it, it'll get there. You know, he's definitely the bigs have played much better from Malloy. Both Agunse and Bulls have gotten a lot more production than probably expected early on. Checking in for division will be Sayon Charles. As Clinton runs point. Clinton coming back from the concussion. Been out there pretty much the whole time for Dominican. And there Big steal by, by Williams. It's Williams. And he'll lay it in. Nice and good. And it's our score. And a timeout is called on the court by Dominican. This is going to be a tight game, Andrew. I mean, both teams are very similar in regards to they both play hard. And it's going to be a tight one all the way through. Which is why you look at Malloy's 0-5 record. Hosh is a Division One. St. Eve's one of the top teams in the region. Every game is two to four points. It's, it's a close. So they could easily be 3-2 and two right now instead of 0-5. And, so, and they have that swagger about them. And they've read it every game. Even the Hosh game, they had a lead at, despite it being a 32-point loss. A three-point loss to Assumption. Two-point loss to Caldwell. A five-point loss to St. Michael, so this easily could, have, could be a three and two team right now. Exactly, you know, and it's just one of those things. And I know Coach Marco would say it would, would take this. What they're learning right now is going to help them against LIU Post in January, David in February, all the top teams in the league, Bridgeport, Stack. It's getting that experience early on and being able to play in those tight games. And now, obviously, you want to win them, but being able to get those experiences early on really builds team camaraderie. And this team, they stayed together. They stayed. Unified. They believe in the staff, they believe in the course, and they believe in the journey. So, let's see how it goes. Clinton, Cook, O'Reilly. Austin. Oh, oh, nice footwork by Chucks. Yeah, a little bit. The steal and yeah, yeah, you got to get that ball. Yeah, the two little guards there, Williams and Gatson, got to get the ball out of the big man's hands there. You know, we don't need him dribbling at half court. Roy's tempo has increased as they've gotten a little more turnovers as of late. This is what they want to do, Andrew. they got to go in transition. They don't want to play this slow pace. They want to get out and get easy scores, for sure. 19-17 is the lead for Malloy. Five minutes left to go on the clock. Here's Darrell Urban giving it off to O'Reilly. and O'Reilly on O'Reilly. That's going to be the matchup all night, Andrew. Absolutely. And then we can see what the call on the court was. I want to say a foul on Mark Watts. He wants an explanation too, as you know. And I know Coach is gonna, you know, being on staff for four years. Coach Mark Watts not into all that. Just play the next play. Play the next play. Get better the next play. You know, and move on. Here's the back door. Is Travis Cook, and he lays it in. 
and the foul. Chance for a three-point play for Cook and a chance for Dominican to take a 20 to 19 lead. Cook, the 6'4 freshman out of Middletown, New York, 170 pounds, averaging about nine points a game, 75% free throw shooter. Bowls back in for uh, Malloy. Bowls Take, back in. Takes out a boom set. And Glenn Scalia will check in for Dominican. Cook shot. Off back iron, no good. Able to pull down the board. Israel Irvin, no good. Good work there yeah, by Bowles. Wearing the headband tonight. A little different look for Kevin. A little, a little throwback, maybe. Yeah, he had that long hair going in the summer. He got that cut, you know, which is a good thing. But I'm not sure what's going on with this headband. <laughs> Williams taking up top of the keys. Driving inside. Kick back out to Marquardt. Thought about a three-pointer. And they're going to call a foul there. See, that's much better for Marquardt. You want him pump faking and then going to, to his two to three dribbles. Him coming off the bounces and his strength. Him pump faking and then going off the bounce. He's much better and more efficient as a scorer. First foul for Charles and fourth for Dominican. And here's Marquardt on the left wing. He's going to drive on Charles. Underneath the basket. No help. Too many dribbles. Getting himself in trouble again. And now he's pushing up the pace. Here's number 13 for Dominican. Glenn Tedder. Going at Gaston. On the right block. He's rejected there. Able to pull down the board. Here's number 32. Darrell Irvin. These second chance opportunities. I know Malloy's smaller, but I know they take pride in their boxing out every day. You know, Coach Ian Thomas Minor really works on that with them. And he's definitely not going to be happy with his rebound disparity right now. Irvin on the right block. Couldn't get it to go. O'Reilly three-pointer. And the, and the roof is coming off the gym here. And clearly for O'Reilly to flick it. You know, that's Chris, though. He, 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 he's such a solid kid. You know, he, was, he wasn't sure playing time out was going to be early for him. But he just gets better every day. And he's just a basketball gym rat. Makes his own play. Left block. Oh, charge thrown by Mark Watt. What a great little hustle play there. That's when you know Charlie's at his best as he comes to the bench at 3,000 early on. He deserves that three there. It's a three point lead for Malloy, 22 to 19. Under four minutes left to go in this first half. See, as a, uh, being on a coaching staff, the last four minutes of it, the first half and the second half are so crucial. You really need to be efficient in those minutes, as you are all the time. But those minutes, those were where games are really won and lost. Momentum shifts right now. So let's see how Malloy is able to go into the locker room before, you know, at halftime. Williams hands it off to O'Reilly. Oh, he's Deep feeling it. Pointer. Heat check. And here's Tedder back the other way. Bounce Kevin, good. Oh, unlucky, Kevin. There's that coach in you coming out, Andrew. It took, it took <laughs> three minutes and 38 seconds. That is pretty good. So that'll be the sixth team foul for Malloy, one away from the penalty. Really good pace game, though, I would say, Andrew, in regards to, you know, the movement of the game and really, you know, players are playing. And Dominican was held to 17 points their last time out, so... A much closer game for both teams in the first half. Yeah, Malloy got up on that big lead early on Assumption. And, but Assumption had a couple shots late in the first half. He saw that momentum changing. Narrow one-point lead for Malloy, 22-21. Inside is Gaston. He's so good at that, hitting that gap. That's, what, that, that's such an important dynamic for this Lions offense to get points from Gatson and Jenkins coming off the bench. Fan favorite, a lot of energy off the bench. I mean, came here as a walk-on, worked his way every single day. The kids on campus love him. He's involved in so much. And a hustle play by Bowles, taking it from the big man. Listen, you know, Kevin has really come in his senior year. He's been, you know, in his career, he was shadowed by Miles Pernigas, Rich Zola, Tyler Hammond at the big spot. You know, he was the Catholic League Player of the Year coming out of Kellenberg. And after his freshman year, minutes were a little inconsistent. And, you know, he's really been one of the more consistent Lions so far early on this year. And a couple of great stories for a coach. You, you, you like the coach's son, but you also like the walk-on. You like the guys that are behind other players on the team and work their way out. To Listen, it comes down to family with Coach Marquardt, and someone I can attest to this, all these players are his sons, you know, and there's no question about that. They all earn every minute of their playing time. Both, even Charlie and Jalen might as well not even have those last names. They are treated like every other player, and, and even probably harder 
he pushes them more. And Bulls hitting foul shots, that's a, definitely an improvement in his game from last year. Two for two from Bulls, 26-21 is the lead for Malloy. You're seeing some pressure now from Malloy trying to get those steals, get out in that transition game that we keep talking about. You know, they don't want to be in this half-court stuff. They want to get out, especially with Gatson and Jenkins on the floor. And now inside of the right block to Will Wise, trying to turn around over Bowles, and he gets the hook shot to Will Wise. Yeah, this Dominican team's got a lot of size. Um, right now, Malloy is extremely small. Kevin has the five, and Jalen's on the bench as well, so you're really small, but really athletic. So let's see how this lineup looks. Williams driving down inside the paint on number 30, Alton King, and drew the foul. Yeah, that's what you got to do when you play against a bigger team. If you're going to be in the half court, really those driving kick plays, try to get to the line, try to get fouls drawn, try to get kicks. The more you can get those big men on the bench, it's better for the smaller lineup. Absolutely, absolutely. But now we got Okunpua coming in and Mark went back in. Derek, uh, Kellenberg for Kellenberg. Another, another sidebar, you know, you have three Kellenberg kids on this Malloy Lions roster. So a wealth of information here uh, on the broadcast. <laughs> and two for two from Williams. I'll give a shout out to Chris Lyons who played here and is now a varsity assistant over there at Kellenberg. Really doing well. Here's Cook inside the low wise and Williams got in the passing lane and hit it out of bounds. It's so important for guys like Derek, and even I know we haven't seen him yet, Mike Torrey, to give these to give Mark Rod in this Lion Ball Club a few minutes here and there as freshmen, you know, to give Bulls and Chucks a, a blow a little bit. If, De if Derek's able to come in and defend really well, as he's all uh, right there, get on a silly foul call. But Mark Rod's not happy because that was pretty good defense there by the freshman. Able to bracket the 6'9 Will Wise and the to Wise. Malloy is in the penalty. Yeah, you know, when we were recruiting these, you know, when we were figuring out what the big situation was going to be this year, we weren't tall, but we're tough in that spot where, you know, that at this level, it's not even really much about height. It's about toughness. How, how are you going to box out that other guy? How are you going to battle inside? Especially in this league, you know, Post is huge this year with their, you know, what they have coming in. Stacks a big squad. Bridgeport is always big, so you got to be tough. Not necessarily just as big. Will Wise hits the first one. Graduate student out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Transfer from Texas A&M International. Yeah, a lot of these Division II schools are going that route, getting that, that transfer in, you know, for a year or so. Catch lightning in a bottle and it can really help your team. Yeah, and there's two sides to that. Yes, yeah. that's great, but I know, you know, being on the other side of it, you know, you get to watch guys develop. Well, Maurice Gatson, you know, freshman year, averaging three minutes. Charles Marquardt, deep three, no good. And you build that family camaraderie, and that chemistry means something in those late games in March. And here's Clinton on the right wing. Tosses it over to Cook, left side. This is a key time for the Lions right now. They really got to hold this lead, especially with all the, the bigs on the bench. Left block to King, dishes out to Clinton, thought about a three-pointer down to Wise once again. Yeah, you know, that's a rough foul there on Curtis, but Curtis brings so much energy defensively, and he really, he makes guys around him play D because he's talking constantly. And when you have a guy like Will Wise out on the court, what does that do to the defense? Is a lot of guys take it brings a lot of attention to it, especially when you're small. You know, but there's ways, you know, I'm sure, Mar you know, the coaching staff came up with a strategy because each big is different. They're, even if you, there's 6'9", guys like to pick and pop and shoot. There's other guys that like to play back to the basket. It really depends on the big. And the first one is no good, and just Malloy come back the other way, 28-25. Williams out on the right wing. It's important to get a solid possession here for the Lions. They've been kind of a little scoreless for a while. Now here's Jackson. And he was stripped underneath the rim. Always emphatical, Maurice Gatson. No matter what the drive is, whether he gets hit or not, he's always bringing that New York City almost swagger, I call it, to, the, to his game. Marquardt will inbound left to the basket. Oh, Kung Pu, well, I got you there. <laughs> Which I'm sure I'll probably get wrong later, and now I'll hear from Derek. 25 red with the foul on the court, according to the referee. E.J. Smith. And it'll be Brandon Williams going to the line. Such an important for Williams to be doing that, to get in those gaps and be able to kick to Mark Watt O'Reilly and the other shooters the Lions have. First one is good, and that will be right around seven points on the night for Williams. 
you know, that's another thing in these games. You've seen Mark Ryder Morris have big games in regards to scoring. They, the Lions are at their best when they each get, you know, you have 15 around for four or five guys. That's when they're really hit, clicking on all cylinders. Now here's Clinton driving on Williams. Stops his dribble at the right elbow. This is back out to King. 50 seconds on the game clock, 16 on the shot clock. Lions bench champ defense. Trying to get this crowd into it. Ice. Back down, he loses his handles, and he gets stripped by the basketball. And Travis Cook, oh, that's a rough call. Probably there. Malloy Bench not happy about it. If I was there, I probably wouldn't be happy about it as well. Rough call to make there, but that's that's a situation there, Andrew. Balls bouncing around. Looks like they have it. They don't have it. Ends up getting to a guy. Ends up being a foul. They go to the line for two instead of going the other way to try to go up 32 or 33 to 25. Now they're at the line shooting. And the last four minutes, this game has really slowed down. A lot of trips to the line for Dominican, and it's exactly what they want to do. This is this is right into their game plan. Coach Clinton would be very happy with the script right now, as is. And the first one is in for Travis Cook. Cook on the day. Big man coming to the bench. Wise going to the bench. Over three points for Cook. Averaging about nine a game. And the second one's up. And good two for two from Cook. 34.9 seconds on the clock. Now this is a, this is an example where the shot clock comes into effect. Instead of it being you go hold for one, you could still do that, but now you're at a 30 second instead of a 35. Real change from this year. Here's Gatson on the Malloy M. Hands it off to Brandon Williams. I have to say this court has nicely been nicely redone. The administration deserves a shout out for that. That we painted over the summer. Williams driving inside. A lot of contact there. Love Brandon to death, but that's one of those where he had nothing. He tried to create something, and there was nothing there. Seven seconds left to go on the game clock. 3.8 for Malloy. Very important that they don't allow a score here right now, Andrew. Very important. Going to the locker room up. Travis Cook. Four seconds left to go. And he turns the basketball over here. Charlie Markwood. It's a three-pointer. And it's on the top of the backboard. Well, we are done with the first half here at Cooley Gymnasium. A lot of frustration, I would say, on both sides, 30 to 27. And uh, what's your initial take after this first half? Well, just seeing Coach Clinton walk off right now and slam, slam the uh, slamming his seat on the bench, he's frustrated. Um, this is a hard fought Division II basketball game right now. You know, experienced coaching staffs, each trying to do different things, and it's been evenly, it's an evenly matched game, and it's going to be all for the taking in the second half. Who's going to execute? Who's going to make? Who's going to make more shots? Who's going to get those stops? And that's really what all these games come down to. Who's, who's willing to get those stops late? And we'll step aside and we'll bring you the halftime show in just a bit. Thank you so much for the first half. I'm excited for the second half. We'll be right back here on the Lions Sports Network. Yeah.
Cena Cooley Gymnasium. Andrew Cortina alongside Jason Cena. And Jason, we saw, it seems like a couple of different games we saw in that first half. It was the Moy Lion trying to play that up-tempo game. Dominican trying to slow it down a bit. And what were your take? My take was, you know, you got two teams trying to do opposite things. And the Lions early on were able to get out in transition. Toward the end of the first half, Dominican was able to really slow the game down, and it's going to be a dogfight. You know, Division II basketball in the East Region, I don't think gets enough recognition. Every team, it's so tight, and this is a non-conference battle. It's going to go down to the wire. Eight scores for the Malloy Lions. It was Brandon Williams with eight points, uh, and alongside Will Wise for Dominican, another eight for him, and... I think the key we look at is the shooting percentage of that first half, 33% from the field from Dominican and 28% from Malloy. You know, being a former assistant coach and being very into scouting, you know, both of the, you know, Mark Rod and Clinton being around at each respective school for a long time, this is just a great scouting job done. They know what the other one wants to do. They're not, you know, for Dominic, you know, for Dominican, you know, Mark Rod's not getting up his open looks. They're making Williams beat them, you know, and the same thing, you know, for the Lions, they're trying to keep the size, you know, from going all too crazy so it's just really two well scouted teams and this is this is kind of like you know March basketball you know everyone you know what the other guy wants to do and you're shutting it down and who's going to be who's going to get those tough buckets late is going to decide who wins this game Andrew and what would you say if there's one player that you look at from Malloy that they need to get going in that second half who is it you know, I'm looking at it, and it's an easy one to say, and I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to combine the two, and I coined the phrase here a long, you know, a while when I was on staff. Morris and Marquardt, you know, they, you know, right now, looking at them, Charlie's 1 of 5 from 3, Jalen's 2 of 5 from the field, Brandon leading them in scoring, Brandon is a good offensive player, but Brandon is at his best when he gives you 10 points, 10 assists, gets other guys involved. He needs to get those two scorers involved, and then from there you get Gatson and Jenkins and O'Reilly and Bowles, but that's what needs to be going. Brandon's your leading scorer, and you could look at the passer, and it's not a knock on Brandon. It's just the role that Brandon has. He's this team's point guard. They're best when their wings are scoring. Brandon Williams had 10 assists in the first half, so you need, uh, in the, excuse me, in the last game against Assumption, you want to see a little more dishing from him. Absolutely, and it was funny because I got, you know, I get, the, I got the opportunity to, you know, go in the locker room before the game, and that's what Coach Morris, Coach Morris, that's what they wanted. They said, Brandon, give me 10 points, 10 assists, and that's what he gave them last game, and that's what, you know, even in the loss, you're still getting those numbers, so that's why this, this halftime sheet is, it's a little eye-opening in regards to, you know, the numbers aren't there, but 1.2 mentioned Brandon Brandon 4 of 4 from the foul line, that is a good thing. You know, when he's getting to the foul line and getting in those gaps, that's when Williams is at his best. And I think you see the difference between these, these two teams and how they, the different kind of styles. Only three three-pointers taken from Dominican, 14 on Malloy's side. Yes, Malloy wants to shoot that rock, and that's something, you know, with Marquardt and Morris and O'Reilly, and even you could throw Gatson in there. They want, they really want to shoot the rock, so that's that's something where they got to hit a little bit more of those, because to take 14 more three to take what is it 11 more threes and only make three more than your opponent is not what the Lions need offensively well we got one half in the books of the O'Reilly uh, brotherly matchup so far uh, Sean O'Reilly's got five for Dominican we got three for Chris O'Reilly which one has jumped out to you more? I mean, they're so similar, and it's funny because I got the opportunity to recruit both of them and got to know Mr. O'Reilly, who's a great guy, and they're both similar players in that they're gritty, hard-nosed, they do make the right play. In regards to how they are, I'm really, I'm going to favor, obviously, the kid we recruited, the kid we got to come here, Chris O'Reilly, and Chris is just a level-headed kid who just, you know, will do whatever it takes for the team, you know, and it, I get, you know, it's funny, before I left, we had to organize the numbers, and unfortunately, we had to give 13 out, which was won by the great John Petroselli. Now, Chris O'Reilly is not John Petroselli, but Chris is the type of kid that wouldn't look into that and would just go out and play, and that's what he's done since moved into the starting lineup. He hasn't put extra pressure on himself. He's hit the open shots when needed. He's played good defense, and that's why Mark, why Coach Marquardt, even at a young age of a freshman, feels comfortable going with O'Reilly. He makes all the smart IQ basketball plays you need. Seems like Charles Marquardt, no matter what, he brings in just coachable guys. You can talk to these kids and they get it. Absolutely, and I had the pleasure of obviously being on staff for four years, and it really is a fun 
formula, you know, in regards to how we have to recruit. You got to recruit Malloy kids, which are good academic kids, good kids on and off the court. And we try to bring in a tough, hard-nosed kid who wants to get better every day. And a lot of times, you know, we go out and we recruit, and other schools pass up on a kid. And we'll look at a kid and say, with four years of great coaching, he'll be able to help. And it's funny, you know, Coach Miles at Post, that was something he mentioned to, you know, I mentioned, had mentioned in passing to us that he can't believe how we'll take a kid that he wasn't recruiting or he heard of him, oh God, I don't want him, and then all of a sudden he's in the Malloy system and he's a player for us. He contributes and he does and he does well and he helps us win. And it's really a testament to Coach Mark Lyon, Coach Morris, who are the longest tenured guys on staff. Obviously, Coach being here for many years and Morris being his longtime assistant in regards to their player development. Well, you might have to just cut this game up and just bring it on your recruiting trips next time. I think, I think <laughs> this is a great pitch from the world. Like, listen, listen, you know, for me, you know, it really meant a lot. It was a very hard decision for me to make, and it was something I really loved doing. And, you know, every I'm still talking to these guys weekly, and it's just it's just a family thing. And I really mean it when I say it. You know, Coach builds men here, and it was an honor being on his staff for four years. Well, we've having a lot of fun here tonight at Cooley Gymnasium, but we still got 20 minutes of action left. That'll do it for the halftime report. In just a bit, Andrew Fertitta, Joe Fasina will be right back with all the action from the Roy Lions College Basketball Sports Network.
Back here from Quilly Gymnasium, Andrew Patino, Joe Fas Jason Patino, excuse me. <laughs> wow. All good, all good, Andrew. That's and uh, our score is 30-27. to 27. we got a whole second half action. What do you say would be your key for Malloy in this second half? Get out and transition. Get out and transition. Speed up the Dominican Chargers. Make this be a high-scoring game. Right now they're at 30. They want to be at 80, 90 by the end of this game. And now hopefully that should be a Malloy win if they get to that number. And we talked about the size mismatch from Malloy to Dominican, but if you look at the, the numbers 20 to 20, was that something that you would hang your hat on? If oh, this, this is what Coach Mark brought, and I'll even give a shout-out to, to uh, Coach Miner right now. Uh, in regard, Coach, you know, working on rebounding every day. And it's not about height with rebounds. It's about being able to box out. And Bowles is doing a great job down there. So is Abunse. But the guards, Williams, Marquardt, Morris, O'Reilly, Jenkins, Gatson, they also contribute in rebounding. Everyone thinks it's all about just size. It's those guards getting those leaking out rebounds, which helps in the transition game as well. Gets them out and going. Marquardt, Williams, Bowles, Morris, and O'Reilly out on the court for Malloy. While it's Clinton, Will Wise, Cook, O'Reilly and Odu for Dominican. First shot attempt for Dominican is no good. Coach Clinton not happy. He obviously, it's real obvious. He wants to slow this game down. That shot was pretty early in the shot clock. And now here's Morris trying to keep his possession of the basketball with on Cook. Bowles really want to see Jay assertive this half. Morris double teamed. Inside the Bulls on Will Wise. And air balls it. Weird, sh weird shot there by Kevin. Now here's Clinton giving it off to Cook on the right side. Back to Clinton. Top of the key. Here's O'Reilly. Driving inside is number 21 for Dominican and gets the layup to roll in. So the first point of the second half along to Dominican, 30 to 29. This has been a difficult part for the Lions. I don't want to say it, Andrew, coming out at into the second half. Three-pointer from O'Reilly. Sky-high shot. No good. And the rebound there goes to Will Wise. Clinton draws Williams. Looking for a screen from Wise. Pull-up jumper. No good. Williams in transition. Cuts two defenders. Lays it in with a right hand. Nice move by the captain, Williams. Brandon even in the, uh, not to cut you off there, in the assumption game, got big buckets late for the Lions. Left-pointer from Huggins. And it's good. 32-32. Back and forth like the first half was for these two teams. It's going to come down to the end of the game. These guys are too close. Too close to teams. Williams. Off ball foul. And that will go against, I think, 21. Number 21, Austin John Huggins. Williams will inbound it up right from the basket. See, yeah, Dominican's going with him on Mark Watt. Longer guy. And Morris underneath the circle gets it to roll in 34 to 32. Two point lead for Malloy. Good sign there for the Lions. You got to get Morris going inside, getting those easy buckets, and then he'll from there get his jump shot going. Here's Clinton across the timeline, driving inside on Williams. Bounce pass to O'Reilly. Right wing Cook driving inside, and they'll call a foul. Looks like it'll go against number 13, Chris O'Reilly. First team foul for Malloy in the second half. It's going to be important who gets to the free throw line in close games and who shoots it well from there. That kind of hurt the Lions last game. They haven't been shooting it as well as they did last year. And Coach Clinton for Dominican wants to talk it over already. What do you think he's seen from his team that wanted to call, to call this timeout? I think he's overall, it's like a little checkle and hide. I think he wants them to slow it down a little bit more, but he's happy with where the score is. They're, they're right in it, and it's a close game. But he definitely is stressing to them right now. Swing the ball around. Don't shoot till under 10 seconds in the shot clock. Make sure you make the right pass. Don't commit it. You know, don't give the Lions a chance to get into that transition game and get easy buckets. Exactly. And if you don't use all that shot clock and you take a long jumper and then you get one of these uh, one of these guys, Morris or Marquardt, on the fast break, that can be trouble for Dominican. Absolutely. You don't want to get the M&M &M boys out on the fast break hitting open shots. You got t-shirts for that, that? No, I have not gotten that yet. And, you know, that for, I'm waiting for them to do that at the bookstore, you know. Inbounding the ball is Clinton finding Cook inside. Oh, that's that's just a nice that's a that's a seasoned coach, you know, calling a timeout to get an easy bucket. 34-34. Williams inside all alone in the left block. 
And it looks like it'll be possession arrow facing. I believe it's the Lions. It'll be the Lions. It'll be Lions basketball remaining on this side of the court. Once again, Williams getting into that tough spot and the double team. When he's yes, trying to drive inside. It's kind of that dive inside, and you know, it's one of those things where this year teams are really, you know, focusing on that. They know what the Lions want to do. Williams hit a gap, and here it is. Williams hitting a gap to Morris. No good. Morris able to follow his shot at his own rebounds. Follow finds Bowles in the left block. No good. A lot of contact there. And then Morris goes back. You know it's going it. the other way. Yeah, offensive foul. foul. Once a, a few times a game that happens to Jay. You know, he's he's almost too athletic for his own good at times, trying to jump over there. He was a little deep, though, in that circle. It was definitely close, Andrew. A little bit of uh, ball movement we saw in that Malloy line. Yes, that was much better. And, you know, they need that. They need multiple guys getting, you know, touches on the ball during There's a possession. Clinton finds Cook driving inside. Another foul call. Refs liking their whistle in the second half. Yeah, you know, they want to make their presence known early on. You know, O'Reilly, that's kind of a silly freshman foul there. Hands extended. Real easy call to make. As Jenkins comes in for O'Reilly. Curtis Jenkins in that first half. Two for four from the field. Good for four points. Now inside is Austin John Huggins. Didn't really see a lot of him point. The Lions get a good shot here. Williams straight away. Finds Bowles right wing. Drives inside. 18-foot jumper, and it's good. He can hit that shot. He really can, and he's really streaky with it, too. And that's like an important time. That's a senior shot right there. Team's down two. Kind of get the momentum back a little bit in the Lions' favor. 36 all. Here's Will Wise, left block. Trying to back down Bowles. Inside. Great defensive job by the undersized Bowles. Sticking with it. And here's Marquardt on the fast break. Oh, that's there. You got to pull that out. See, that's a that's a wasted chance right there to go up. And now you tie at 36 with the minute going the other way. Four and a half into this second half. And like we saw in the first, a back and forth game. Both teams not really finding their stride yet. Not a lot of big runs in the second half. Here's Travis Cook. 12 feet out, no good. Yes, Williams getting the ball. Here they go. Let's see if they get to the fast break. Maybe secondary break. Looking for Morris inside. Picked off by Travis Cook, and he'll bring it back the other way. Top of the key. Kicks out to Clinton. Right corner three. Front iron no good. Will Wise taps it to John Huggins inside once again. And Williams getting on the floor. And Williams finds the rebound there. Here's Jenkins left block driving inside, and he's fouled there by O'Reilly. Yeah, O'Reilly's questioning the call there, but I mean, you know, that's an athlete going into a defender who's waiting for a charge. You're going to get the foul call on you every time. First trip of the day for Curtis Jenkins to the line. This has been an area where Curtis has struggled early on in his freshman career. 55% free throw shooter. First one's good. He'll get better as time goes on. You know, he, he's a gamer. He's a tough kid. You know, accomplished kid out of high school. Sat out last year because he really wants to be a part of the Malloy Lions program. You know, went to NASA for a year, didn't play. You know, really showed his loyalty to um, this program. And how much do you like to reward those guys as a coach when they do stuff? Like oh, that? I mean, that's awesome. And we loved Curtis. We, we, recruit, we were recruiting Curtis for a long time. Me being from Plain Edge, him being a Farmingdale kid, that's right in my backyard. That's an easy recruiting trip. And um, it just came down to that it was better off for him to come the next year. And a full timeout called by Charles Marquardt. 38 to 36 is the score here in this second half of play. And. Uh, what have you seen so far from the Moore Lions? Uh, it's kind of similar that Jekyll and Hyde. There's yeah. a possession where they look good. Then they make a silly turnover, and Dominican's able to slow the game down. It's going to come down to how efficient they're going to be offensively. Because I think in years past, the Lions, it's been how well they're stopping teams, keeping them under 55 points. Now it's how well are they going to score. You know, how are they going to be able to get on that run to kind of separate themselves and be able to keep that lead has been a difficult time. They love to get year. that three ball going. They let off the scoring early on with Chris O'Reilly hitting one, but so far we've only seen them hit about five for 15 so far from long range. You know, it's not easy when teams know you want to shoot the three, and you kind of when you live and die with the three, when you're hitting is great. When you're ice cold, your offense can go stagnant for a while, which is why it's important when threes aren't going. You got Williams and Jenkins getting to the line, Charlie getting to the line, and doing that, and then going out for the threes. We'll get you those lineups out on the court. It'll be Clinton. King, Cook, Jarrell Irvin, and Chris o, uh, uh, Sean O'Reilly, excuse me, for Dominican. 
And we'll see who's coming out on the court from Malloy. Dominica got a lot of guys in in that first half there, Andrew. Really played their whole squad, it looks like. They dressed 16 tonight, and they used a lot of them. Brandon Williams, Jalen Morris, Curtis Jenkins, Charles Marquardt, and Chuck Sobunse out on the court, the shot blocker. And then Malloy started in and showed a little press. And see there, that, that's what the line, you know, even though they broke it, just even showing that, showing a different look is so important. Now here's inside to King. Oh, great double there by Mark Watt. And Mark Chuck's Watt. doing a great job as well. Able to come up with the basketball. Here's Brandon Williams, full head of steam, out to Mark Watt. Wide open, three-pointer, and he hits it. You're almost worried sometimes it was too wide open for the shooter, Mark Watt, but calmed himself down, hit the open shot. Lions take a 41-36 lead. And that was Mark Watt's second three-pointer of the night. Williams drawing another offensive foul. Big crafty play there by the senior Williams. And you just love that peskiness from Williams just to get inside the other team's head. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, Darius Burton at Baldwin, you know, he came through that program. And that's continued through here. He's such, such a tough, hard-nosed kid. You know, he, he makes, again, one or two of those plays a game. And is there certain schools that you, you see a player come out of that you go back to the well each time? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of that. And Brandon, you know, actually, you know, when we went to Baldwin previously with Chris Manning, it didn't have the end result that we wanted. You know, Chris ended up having a great career. This one is no good. He's a 61% free throw shooter at the line. Dominican on the year shooting 58% from the line. Again, just like the line, struggling from the line, which tells you why they're struggling early on in the year. Not being able to hit foul shots at key times hurts. And the second one is good. So that ends a 8-0 run by Malloy, 43-37. This is where the Lions need to continue to get scores. They just went on an 8-0 run. Dominican answered. Can the Lions get a bucket here? Here's Marquardt looking for Jalen Morris. Going on Cook. Double team off to Abunse, and he's rejected by Cook on the left block. That's one of those where Chucks, I know what he's trying to do there, but I'm sure the coaching staff's going to show him in film. He, just, just dunk that. Go right at the rim there. Don't lay, lay that up. Yeah, that's going to get blocked. You lose some of the height there when you go off to your left. Absolutely, and that's that's you know one of the things he's working on, and he's working real hard to take it out of his, the hit that hitch out of his game. But you know it does surface from time to time. Here's Morris on the feed from Williams. Couldn't get it to roll in. Wise with the rebound. Yeah, Co Malloy coaching staff wanted a foul there. They felt they hit Jalen's arm. It was close. Here's Clinton. Now inside to Will Wise. Chuck's bodying up nice. That, that's all you can ask for there. I know he scores there, but that's all you can ask on my own side. 43-39 uh, is our score. 14 minutes left and rejected there by Will Wise is Brandon Williams. Curtis Jenkins making the big stop in transition to save the Williams turnover. That's a little play right there from the freshman that you like to see, you know, stopping that. Williams making an ill-advised turnover going in there. I know he saw something, but two guys on you. Kick that back out. Let's get a good possession. Brandon Williams, top of the key. Jenkins, right wing. Marquardt, straight away. Driving in on Clinton, pullback jumper, and it's good. There you go, and that's something that, that's the part of Charlie's game that's gotten better. It's not just a three ball now. He can hit those shots inside, and he's looking to hit those shots inside. Freshman year, he's more just trying to shoot threes. Now he's looking to get inside and really become a total scorer. Six-point lead, 13 minutes left to go. Wise left block. Out to Cook. There's number 25 with a jumper. That's and a, a dagger point. right there for, for Dominican. Three-point ball game now. E.J. Smith, as we talked about, a lot of depth here for Dominican College. We've seen a, a ton of players out on the court tonight. And that goes, you know, you got guys fresh coming in, but it also sometimes hurts continuity. So it's really, it's a good and bad thing. It depends on your personnel. Only the second three-pointer of the game for Dominican. As Moy can't get the basket. Chuck's doing a good job containing him. Great read by Morris. Steal in transition. What the Lions want. Jenkins short. And Jenkins... Looked like he was already had the height and tried to finger roll it up at the basket. He's almost too athletic at times, if that makes sense. And here's E.J. Smith driving inside, and he draws the foul. Rough blocking call there. Rough, especially with the two calls early on Morris that you would think that would have won a charge. Goal going against the Lions. Good attempt there by Obunse, the senior. And that foul will go against, I believe, number 25, Chucks Obunse. And when you have a size mismatch, you don't want Chuck Sabunse in foul trouble. 
No, you do not, because your uh, answers are going to be freshmen after bowls, and then if you don't go the freshman route, you're going to go really small with five guards, pretty much. You might even have to see that at the end of the game. E.J. Smith hits the first one. E.J. Smith giving a little energy to this Dominican college team in this second half. Absolutely. Second one is up and good. So 8-0 run is answered very quickly. It's 45-44, to back to a one-point game. For Dominican Milwaukee. showing some pressure. They beat it. Marquardt for three. It's good. Charlie's getting hot here now. Charles Marquardt with another three-pointer, his second of his second half over here. Here's Wise left block. Oh, that's another a foul on a Bunce. That's his fourth. That's going to be an issue. That's going to be an issue. We'll see what Marquardt decides to do. And if I'm Dominican, I keep throwing him on that left block. If Abunse is still going to I think it's calls. in their offense anyway, but absolutely now. Now with four fouls, it's kind of asking for it right now as Kevin Bowles is coming in for Abunse. Kevin Bowles so far tonight. Bounce pass inside to King. Oh, that's an old school oh, play using no the good. glass. 48-46. Charlie wants the ball. Here it is. It's up. Short. Air ball there from Marquardt. It's 48-46 is our score. 12 minutes left to go in the second half. Dominican slowing it down. Corey Hargraves. Another set of brothers on hand tonight. And there's Marquardt with the steal. Hustle play by 32, Marquardt. And he's going up, and he cannot finish on the other end. Oh, they are upset on the Malloy bench. Thought that should have been a foul. Now they're going to get the foul back there instead of up there at the hoop. Coach Marquardt very heat, having a heated discussion over there. And some words are definitely exchanged as Coach Marquardt just tries to walk away. And I think it's Coach Morris getting warned for standing up on the bench. You know, I have to say, you know, be, you know, having experience with them, they really do hold. Back. They really do give the most respect to the officials, but it does get emotional in there, especially on a tight play like that where Marquardt was at the rim, thought he was fouled, didn't get the call. It'll be Williams, Morris, Bowles, Gaston, and Marquardt out there on there for the Lions. Experienced group out here, seniors and juniors for the Lions. Williams drives inside, pulls it out right wing. Off to Bowles, right corner. Back to Williams. Driving in the right block. He, a lot of contact, and he gets the foul call this time. You want Williams getting to the line. Get attacked there by Brandon Williams. He drew three defenders, and when you when you draw that kind of attention, that's when you get those easy kickouts. Yes, that it's not even just Brandon at the rim. It's the kicks you're going to get from that, and you're hoping that it's guys guarding Marquardt and Morris and Gatson with open threes. And Brandon Williams so far perfect from the line tonight. Almost jinxed him there. Hit the rim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five for five. If you're a broadcaster, you got to learn there's no jinx. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the one when six I watch the film, I'll be upset. Oh, you jinxed my guy right there. Oh, yeah. This is it. Believe me, a lot of sixth inning no-hitters that were ruined <laughs> by broadcasters, I assert. <laughs> now, here's E.J. Smith trying to feed it over to number 33. And got it tipped out of bounds. Dominicans had some success at out of bounds plays tonight. Let's see what they do here. Look Steal by Marquardt. Smith. Marquardt gets it over to Gaston. Left side, back to Marquardt. Pass was tipped. Up with it is Williams. Sees an opportunity, back to Marquardt. Here's good Gaston. extra pass. Left corner three. Front iron, no good. That's a three that would have brought the roof down. And now here's on the back end. It's Alton King. Gets it to roll in. Excuse me, say on Charles. Two-point game, ten, about 10.54 left. 50-48 to 48 is our score. Williams across the timeline. Malloy going with that like four-cross look pretty much, looking for screens. Oh, there it is. Marquardt left corner three, and it's good. It's good. He's starting to feel hot in the Marquardt section in the uh, left corner of the gym as we're facing is going crazy. Leads up to five. Here's E.J. Smith underneath the basket. Bowles with the rebound. Here they go. Here we go. Get him out in transition. Gatson yeah. all taking it all the way. Block. Mo, Mo will go to the line to shoot two. Mo Gatson drawing the contact and will shoot a couple free throws. Looking to check in here. Whole slew of subs. 
Sean O'Reilly and Joe Clinton as EJ Smith will take the seat on the bench. Looks like more of their starting lineup look, looking at it quickly. Curtis looks like he's coming in for the Lions. Curtis Jenkins, that is. So it'll be Cook, Clinton, and O'Reilly checking in for Dominican, and Jenkins checking in for Malloy. First shot is up and good. Jenkins going to give Morris a blow. That's a smart play, a smart time right there. Give him a minute or two rest to finish the game strong. They're going to need Morris late. Six-point game now for Malloy. They're looking to try to pull away every time they do. It seems like Dominican comes right back. And it's not saying necessarily Malloy's doing a bad job of it. It's just you got quality basketball teams that are not going to give up, and wins are not easy to come by in the East region anymore. Seven-point lead for Malloy. Here's Cook, left wing. O'Reilly, top of the key. Now Clinton, right wing. Riley holds the ball over Malloy, and that switching man it looks like they have. Riley, back to Cook, near center court. Ten, eight seconds on the shot clock. Cook gets the screen, drives inside, right side layup, and it's good. That's, that is what Dominican wants. Took it low into the shot clock and got a score. That's exactly what they want to do. Now they just need to get the stops defensively. And now it slows down Malloy's pace a little bit. 55-50, here's Gatson driving baseline. Pull-up jumper, and it's good. Yes, that's the shot Gatson loves to take. That pull-up jump shot. Fan favorite as he gets the crowd going. It's a seven-point lead back for Malloy. Big stop here for the Lions if they can get it. Here's Clinton. Calling it the Brandon screen. reaching. Back out to King. King drives inside. Hands it off to Sayon Charles. Up and over. Layup attempt. No good. Gets his own rebound and bowls. Two arms straight in the air and they call him for the foul. Yeah, ref saying that he put his arm over. That's a tough call there. Kevin's playing straight up and it's one of those where he's saying he went over. I don't know. It was. It looked pretty straight up from our angle over here. Well, as long as we keep it PG, you can disagree with the calls. <laughs> If you're on another bench, I don't think you're going to keep it that not, that PG for the broadcast. Yeah, no, nah, I definitely kept it PG, but, you know. <laughs> at the line, shoot two for Dominican. Here's Sayon Charles, 37% free throw shooter, and we saw it right there. Yep, and that's why, you know, again, I can't say it enough. Foul shooting wins games, man, and if you leave shots at the line, it could come back to hurt you. Second one is up, and no good. And both in and out, weird, weird bounces. The ball rolled, and you thought it would go in. You know, getting it over the cylinder, but it did not. Nine minutes left to go. Seven-point lead. Here's Williams. Over to Gatson on the right wing. Driving oh. inside. No one home. And he kicks it off. Shot off the glass. No good. Trying to save it. And Jared Cook comes up with the ball. They have numbers if they want to push. And they'll bring it back. Here's Clinton. Oh, they got a mismatch inside. Williams in the block. And Bowles kicks the inbound pass. Well, that, that was a nice save there by Bulls. You had Williams in the post against a Dominican big, not what the Lions wanted. Clinton inbounds left to the basket, gets it over to Charles. Back to Clinton, left corner three. In and out. Someone take the lid off that thing. It's 57-50 for Malloy. 8.20 left to go. Coach Morris would laugh at you. This is a shooter's jam, and usually teams that don't shoot well end up shooting well here, so it gets a little payback right now. Now here's Marquardt trying to drive on O'Reilly. Height takes a three, no good. A little force there by Mark Watt. And now here's Cook looking for the ball. Great hustle play by Gatson. Causes the deflection. Hits off Dominican. It will be White. It will be Lions ball as O'Reilly checks in. 8-10 left to go in this first half. In the second half, excuse me. I'm having too much fun. I want to I want a whole other half of basketball with you. Yeah, no. We're, uh, we'll have to do this again at some point. Uh, this is this has been great. Here's Hope the viewers are enjoying it. Will Wise about to check in for Dominican. Chris O'Reilly in for Malloy, that is. O'Reilly on O'Reilly again. Here's Brandon Williams driving inside. Kicks it out to Bowles. Now Gatson inside. Loses his dribble. And they're going to call a foul on Dominican. That's what you want to see Gatson and Williams do as the second half winds down. Get into the lane. Go get someone to foul them or be able to kick. Great play. Coach Clinton not happy with the call. And that foul will go against Sayon Charles, number 22. Gatson's first shot is good. So it's an eight-point lead now for Malloy. Gatson perfect from the line today, three for three. 
Foul shooting has been on the upside for the Lions to, in today's game. And Gatson takes his second. And it's good. So now a nine-point lead just where you want to be if you're Charles Marquardt and the Malloy Lions. Absolutely. Now it's time to get a stop. I hear say on Charles straight away. Gives it off to Cook. Cook Cole. driving inside. Draws a couple of defenders. Unable to go. And there's Curtis Jenkins with the rebound. Out in transition. Here come the Lions. There's Jenkins. And a travel there. Got a little excited there. I think he was thinking, do I try to jump over this guy or am I passing? I think Kinda we know he can. Hey, he absolutely can. He was a Division One football recruit. Got recruited by schools like Rutgers and, you know, other schools in the trying to think what conference it was. It's coming. Clemson was looking at him early on, so he's a big time athlete. Well, I wanted to play basketball though, so we were very lucky. Fifty nine of fifty seven thirty three left to go on the clock. Andrew Fertita, Joe Fasina. And so far in this second half, what have you seen different from the first from Malloy? Um, you know, they're getting a little more out in transition, I would say. They're being a little more efficient, you know. One or two threes makes a difference. Right now, you know, they were four fourteen for three. Charlie hits two big threes, and now you're at a nine-point lead rather than a two- and four-point lead. So the lead is there. There's Dominicans are run away from being back into it. A lot of basketball still left to be played here at Quilly. They use some of those shooting numbers from the field. It's Malloy, 32.8%, 38% for Dominican. And those three numbers, like you talked about, 7 for 22 for Malloy, only 3 of 7 for Dominican. Exactly. It's efficient. It's a fit, you know, Dominican's threes are efficient. Malloy takes more of them. It's a Malloy, game. But, but Malloy is starting to hit them, so now it's that kind of, it's that chess match. We'll see how they're able to come out. I'm sure they'll try to not let Marquardt touch the ball in regards to shooting threes. And it looks like Marquardt is not in right now. It's Williams, Bulls, Gatson, O'Reilly, and Jenkins for the Lions. Really small, more gap hit guys, not as many shooters. And then you have 6'9", Will Wise on the other side of the court for Dominican. Well, it'll be Joe Clinton, Sayon Charles, Jared Cook, and Sean O'Reilly. Here's Will Wise back to Cook straight away. The C's open up for Charles, can't finish, but behind is Will Wise. Bowles is down there, he collided, it looked very awkward. Hopefully Kevin's okay. Well, Bowles is down. And Kevin's a tough kid. Kevin's a tough kid, man. He, he's going to take a lot to, you know, you know, get him down. Eric Ressinger, the Malloy uh, trainer, got up there quick for a brief moment. 59-52 on the bucket. Seven ten left to go in this second half. Looking from the screen from Jenkins, he goes to his right wing. This is a tough time for the Lions because you want to transition, but you also want to get scores and take off some time off the clock a little bit. A little bit. Williams with a Hail Mary shot on two defenders underneath the hoop. No good. Hail Mary was generous there, Andrew. <laughs> Here's Sayon Charles back to Joe Clinton left wing. Now Sean O'Reilly and Chris O'Reilly doing battle again. Charles right side. Inside turnaround. Kick out to Cook. Back to Charles. Right corner three. Good close out there by the freshman Jenkins. Giving a lot of height in that matchup, but still defending him really, really well. Now here's Gatson driving inside. Puts it up. Off glass. Anchor. That is a New York City layup, as they would say, in the locker room. Playing, bringing that swagger to this Long Island school. Big layup there by Gatson. Nine-point lead for Malloy, 61-52. Clinton, three-pointer. Off backboard. No good. Jenkins looking to push. Oh, here's yeah. Williams. Oh, silly turnover there by Williams. Looking for the highlight. Get the bucket there. And here's Jared Cook. Came up with the steal. And O'Reilly, grab it! Looking for O'Reilly. And Chris comes up with it. Now here's Brandon Williams. Pick left up. side. Looking for balls, and he's hacked. And it was funny that he had Jenkins cutting. It looked like Williams wanted the highlight. Kevin was near there. Kevin gets the ball, gets fouled, goes to the line. And the Eminem boys are going in. Marquardt and Morris after these foul shots. Dominican also has subs coming in. 5.50 left to go in this second half 61-52 Malloy looking for their first win of the season Oh, back iron, no good Now checking in for Malloy It'll be number 13 Jerem Tedder 
and 25 EJ Smith. And looks like Morris is going in for Bowles, which this was something I kind of alluded to earlier, going really small. Kevin hits this foul shot. It will be a real small lineup in there for the Lions. It's going to be Morris, Marquardt, Williams, Jenkins, and Gatson. Athletic group, five out you're going to see now. And, yes, they'll slow it down a little bit, but it'll be five out. Make one of those, make the bigs at the middle and have to guard one of those real guards pretty much. No real bigs in there for the Lions. Ten-point lead for Malloy. Here's Tedder. Off the Charles right wing. Now Cook gets a screen. E.J. Smith left side. Tedder, top of the key, and too much of, I guess, an arm there from Brandon Williams, and I'll draw a foul. It's one of those ticky-tack calls. Ticky-tack calls. It goes both ways. You know, it's just one of those. They're really trying to stop the arm bar this year, so one of those silly ones. It's Williams' first foul, though. Impressive for the amount of minutes. Williams is logged that he's his first foul, and we're five minutes, 30, five minutes and 32 seconds left in the second half. Malloy, nine fouls to Dominican's eight, so it'll send Tedder to the line. First shot is up, and no good. Big rebound by Morris. With the smaller line of a nice rebound there for Morris, as you said, Jason. Here's Williams. Driving inside. And there it is. There it is. Even though Brandon wants to be going, consider going up, that's an efficient play there. Now Williams is at the line for the Lions. Now it's about hitting these foul shots late, Andrew. Trying to extend this lead to more than 10 for the Lions. You know, basketball is a funny game. 10 points is not a big lead. As I saw in my game today, a friend's down 16 in the first half, came back to within two. No lead is safe. 63 to 52 after the first one goes in for Williams. And the second one is good as well. Important. You know, last game against Assumption, Williams missed some foul shots late. So it's good to see that he's bounced back and he hit those two. Now here's Cook giving it off to Will Wise. And he gets stripped of the basketball. Oh, and great it's hustle. Play. Great play there by Jenkins doubling inside and almost came up with the save. This group is lacking in size, but they are athletic. If they're going to give the ball inside, Dominican is going to come with a quick double. And it'll probably be Jenkins doubling. Morris is guarding the big man inside, doing an admirable job. Now Very undersized. left wing. Oh, here it is. A steal. Eminem boys on the break. Morris with the dunk. <laughs> Had to let you go with the play-by-play -play duties that time. You're having too much fun. Jason Pacina <laughs> on the call. 66-52. to 52. And Malloy can't contain themselves. A 14-point lead here at Queeley Gymnasium. They, they feel it right now, and they want to feed off the energy, you know, and there's still a lot of ball game left, but it's good to see a group that's gone through so much, as you said, Andrew, 0-5, and, and they see the moment getting close, and they're not tightening up, being excited, wanting to get ready to push this lead possibly even further right now. And I know as a coach, you don't want to say 0-5, uh, but it's out of conference, but do, do you take some fact that it's not inside the ECC. And I wanted to say this, I wrote, you know, in my brain when I was going to go on the broadcast and I was thinking about the que this question coming up, and here's how I would say it. Right now, Beloy has the same record as most of the teams in their league. I know Tech and Stack played the other day, but most teams are 0-0 zero and zero right now. At best, they're one game behind and they haven't played yet, as we're looking at the standings right now. Stack is 1-0. and oh. Everybody else is 0-0. Zero and zero. Even though the Lions are 0-5, oh when it comes to their goal, which is to put a conference banner up in this gym and make the NCAA tournament, nothing Nothing has been lost yet, so I think this team has this, that mindset. Obviously, you want wins for the exterior, but interior from the interior, from the players' perspective, they know that their goal is not out of reach, and they have a long journey still to go. There's no panic setting in. When Absolutely at, not. You know, when being around them, they they're you know they're very upbeat. They want to win. Obviously, they're disappointed about that, but very upbeat. They know there's they have the tools to have a successful season. Here's King straight away, and he. Loses oh, the that's oh, a tough wow. call, and I could say because I'm on the broadcast, and I'll keep it PG. But that is that 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 was a rough one. It looked like uh, King tripped over his own feet there. I didn't see a lot of contact from Marquardt, but nonetheless, so double bonus now for Malloy, and that'll send Altan King to the line again, which could be a good or a bad thing with the poor foul shooting of Dominican this year. Looking to check in for number three, Jared Cook, as Arjan Bequiri. Excuse me. Guard from Yonkers, New York, and the first one he hits. So on the court right now, it's Wise, E.J. Smith, Altine King, and Bequiri, followed by Jerim Tedder. Second one is up and good. Malloy going with that small lineup late, and, you know, the 
benefit of going to a small lineup late. You know, I know Mark Watts an average ball handler, but the rest of them you have pretty good ball handlers out there. You know, guys that can handle the rock on the perimeter. Mark Watt can absolutely do that along with the other guys. So you really are able to keep that ball swinging. Great Jenkins. hit by, oh, that's a rough foul. That's a tough foul there on Jenkins. But that's what happens when you're that athletic and you go that hard to the rim. You know, that's a hard nose foul. You know, but no, no silly nonsense, which is nice. Nice to see that it got broke up right away. That'll be the ninth foul as Jenkins will be sent to the line. And that'll go against Alton King. And the second one is up and good. 67-54 to 54 now for Malloy. Still got a lot of ball game left. Got to keep being efficient. Jenkins hitting two foul shots. The freshman is very, very nice to see in a clutch situation. 14-point lead now for Malloy. Here's King. Off the Bequiri left wing. Back to King. He'll drive inside on Morris. Layup attempt over Morris. No good. Rebound to Will Wise. Kick out. Right wing to Tedder. Morris doing an admirable, admirable job inside right now, trying to hold off the big man from Dominican. Under five in the shot clock. Here's Bequiri, and he gets stripped. Uh, he got a foul call there. They're calling it tight. And you got to say it's going both ways. Those fouls are extremely frustrating from a coaching staff standpoint. You got five seconds on the shot clock. You're doing a great job. And then a silly foul like that going for a strip. It wasn't, you know, one of those, I wouldn't say silly, but tough foul calls. As now two shots for Dominican. Both teams now in the double bonus as Bequiri goes to the line. The guard out of Yonkers, New York, went to Sacred Heart High School. And now another fresh face, Avery Walker, will check in for Will Wise. And now you got Bowles coming in for Jenkins. I like this move by Mark Watt. Now you bring in the, you know, the guy who's been playing the big spot after their big goes to the bench. So now Kevin will be against guys closer in his size. 12-point lead. Malloy looking to clinch down on that defense and get themselves their first win of the season. Here's Gatson over to Williams' right wing. Down inside, right block to Kevin Bowles. Looking it back down at Avery, and he kicks it out to Williams. Kevin Bowles looking like uh, Mr. Bill Walton with that headband, you know, going back going back in the day a little Under bit. Under 10, here's Gatson, left elbow. Jumper, no good. Gets his own rebound, kicks it out. Huge, huge rebound there. And here's Mark Watt, 17-foot jumper off back iron. The query with the rebound. Here's Tatter, he'll look to push. Inside, and Avery wasn't ready for the pass. As you guys can see, now has the game, as Dominican is, tra Dominican is trailing and the game is going, they're going to try and run and get some easy points. Not what Dominican wants to do. So the Lions have to, un you know, now it's kind of their reversing roles now where the Lions are slowing the game down and Dominican is trying to speed the game up. And that's where you get the, the two guards out there, Gatson and Williams, who can really control the basketball. Here's Mark Watt, left block. Goes up with a shot and draws some contact, and he'll go to the line. Crafty play there by Marquardt. That's an experienced guard play there. He knows he's going to get everyone with the pump fake, which is a move that kids don't use enough these days. Now everything's off the bounce. You know, a good pump fake could really get a defender in the air, jump into them, and get yourself to the foul line. How many times are you going to mention Coach's son? There's got to be a drinking game at home or something. There's Not at all, but he, uh, you know, it's funny. Even in recruiting him, if you didn't tell me his last name, and it's funny because there's a, an article that the Daily News wrote I think it was a Daily News wrote on Charlie. Charlie was voted New York's best shooter, and his high school coach described it as he's a coach's son. He's a gym rat. He does all the little things for you, all the little, little ins and outs of the game. That's what he does. He's a student of the game, you know, and you got to play like that when you are a coach's son, and that's just what he's done, and he's earned every minute. Coach did not start him early on in his freshman year. You know, he had to earn every minute, and he's just like every other player with these Lion Bunch. Mark Watt, two for two on the line, and back the other way is Avery getting those two right back. 70-58, to 58, a 12-point lead for Malloy. I'm still not feeling easy right now, Andrew, about this. You know, a 12-point lead st doesn't seem like it's enough right now. And here's Mark Watt, right wing stutter step out to Gatson, and they'll slow it down. You could see that's the first time tonight Gatson didn't go try and hit a gap off a kick, slowing the game, it's slowing the game down. Now here's Gatson. There's the gap hit. Pauses. And throws it up and draws some contact, and they're going to wave it off and call it a foul on Gatson. Story of the game. Story of the game so far. That offensive foul call, it's happened a bunch of times tonight. And, you know, it's been even on both sides, I have to say. Even though Malloy's probably got the worst end of it, because at times, like when they really need a bucket, they've gotten the call. But it's been the same way on both sides. That's all you can ask for. Two minutes left to go in this second half. Here's Smith gives it off to Tedder right wing. 
Looking for a screen from Avery. He'll drive inside, and the ball is dislodged. And here's Brandon Williams up, two on one. Looking to take it himself. Gives it off to Morris. Lays it down off glass. There you go. Nice job there by Williams. Waiting to the last possible mo moment to give it up to Morris. Two points to the Lions. Extend the lead. And it's a 14-point lead. Under two left to go here at Quealy. Oh, here Williams trying for the steal. Almost had it. And now here's Tedder's 12-foot jumper. No good. Rebound out to E.J. Smith. Top of the key. Driving inside. Kicks out to Tedder once again. In and out. No good. And Bowles picks up the board. And they're going to slow it down as we're under 130 here at Queeley. 72-58. to Malloy on top. And the score is not indicative of how close this game has been throughout. This is a hard-nosed two teams that were picked in the upper part of their leagues. Dominican, I believe, was picked third in their region of the CAC. Um, the Lions, I believe, were fifth. Yes, they were fifth. I had to correct Rick Rosetto with that on the website. Um, they were fifth as Gatson with a missed shot there. So these teams are going to be playoff teams, expect to be playoff teams, and it's going to be a hard, you know, a tough season. One minute left. Here's EJ Smith taking a three. No good. Dominicans and now trying to take some threes, speed this game up, try to get some buckets. And that ball is off Kevin Bowles, according to the referee. The, I call it the Marquardt section over there. Mrs. Marquardt's over there. Eugene Marquardt's over there. Not happy with that call. 53 oh, seconds left to go. Whole slew of them at every game. <laughs> grandma and grandpa included. It's awesome. Family atmosphere here, definitely at Malloy College. Here's Avery giving off to EJ Smith. Smith. Now inside to Avery, trying to back down Bowles, turn around jumper, no good. Marquardt up with the rebound, and we're under a minute here left to go. And we're going to slow it down. You see the win is now in sight. The crowd's starting to stand up, and they're going to give a nice cheer. They know how hard these Lions have been fighting for this first win of the year. And it's, as someone who's close to this team, it's very nice to see. Here's Williams, Williams to. fadeaway jumper on the right block, and he gets it to roll. Off glass and good. Now the Lions bench is doing lead. some silly stuff now. <laughs> Very silly stuff. But it's good to see the smiles. Here's a jumper from number 21. No good. Jalen Morris pulls down the board. And Ten seconds left to go. And after a rough month, it seems like Malloy is going to get back into the win column with a 16-point victory over Dominican College here at the early Gymnasium. Great win for the Lions. This was fun, Andrew. This was this was awesome. Um, but great win for the Lions. I'm sure Coach Mark Rod, as he's walking by right now, is going to have a sigh of relief tonight. But they'll enjoy it tonight. But it's always on to the next one for the when you're coaching at the college level. Another big game from Charlie Marquardt poured in 28 last time. He poured in 16 tonight, along with Brandon Williams, the leading scorers. I'm looking at these numbers right now on the live stats on the Mac, and I'm, as I said earlier, it's exciting to see Marquardt with 16, Williams with 16, Morris with 13, Gatson with 10. That's the balance they need. When they have one guy going with 28 to 30, it's not the continuity is not there. When they have multiple guys with double figures, continuity is there, and it's great to see. Will Wise was the leading scorer for the Chargers. He had eight in the first half, only four in the second. As we really saw that Malloy Lions defense really clinch down and their transition offense got going. Absolutely. And, you know, Coach Marco will be very happy being a defensive-minded coach. Very happy for that second-half effort there by the Lions. It's great to see you have, you know, the relief of the win. You got Coach Morris doing, the, I think, the wobble or something with the whole team. It's really exciting to see the, them get their first win. Hopefully it's the first of many here for the and Lions. I see the sure. excitement on your face. You want to run over there. You want to get it. I'm very relieved. You know, again, as I said, it was a tough decision to leave. And them being home and five definitely hurt me a little bit because you want to see them do well. All 12 kids were kids that was involved in their recruiting process. So you, it's a family here and you want them to do well and it's great to see them get off the schneid tonight and get their first win of the year. And we'll get you some of those final stats to go home with. Shooting on the game, it was Malloy who was about 28% from the field in the first half. In the second, they turned it up to 41%, and for the game, right around 34. That's exactly where you want to be in that second half, right around that 40% number. Yeah, and you jumped at the shooting, so I went the opposite round. I looked at the rebounds, and for all Dominican size and how they're bigger, rebounding 40 to 40, that's where... Malloy was able to neutralize that size and be able to pull out the dub and stop doing what they do best. And what jumps out to me, uh, Jason, is you see the, the spread out scoring. You set up for 16 from Williams, 13 from Jalen Morris, 16 from Charlie Marquardt, another 10 from 
uh, Murray, uh, Mo Gaston off the bench. And that's huge when you get points off the bench, and I think that's something they struggled with early. They went with Jenkins in the starting lineup. Mo was coming in. There was energy there, but there wasn't enough scoring there. You bring Jenkins in with Gatson and Obunte and the other bench players, and it's just a better flow coming in and energy coming in off the bench. And if you're going from this game, you want to bow whatever happened tonight. What do you tell the guys? What do you take from tonight to go forward? Simply besides the W, you take how they gritted out this victory. Charlie in the first half struggled from shooting threes. He only he ended up shooting four or ten. He was one of five, six early. It wasn't their best game, but they gritted it out. They found a way, and that's what puts that's what's cut the, cuts down nets. That's what puts up banners and jams. Find a way to gut out wins, and that and that that'll be something they carry on into their next game. The belief in knowing now that they can get a win even when they're not playing at their best. And you look at those assists to turnover number, that's always something, an indication for me. You look at Dominican, 14 assists to 17 turnovers, under 10 for Malloy, 14 assists to 9 turnovers. And I know we talk, spoke about it early, Mark Watt, that's the Mark Watt team right there. Low turnover numbers, high assist numbers, keeping those turnovers under 10, and that's when you have senior point guards like Williams and Gatson to keep those turnover numbers low, and that gives you extra possessions, and it means everything. Thing, especially in close basketball games. Well, before we wrap it up here at Quilly Gymnasium, I just want to tell you, I had a, a whole ball with you today, Jason. <laughs> I hope we can do this again soon. What was? What are you taking from tonight? Uh, you personally as a coach, looking at Malloy going forward in this season. I, I take it that this is going to be a fun ride. I know there's some people out there looked at the record and are saying, I don't know, you know, Petroselli's gone two years, McLeod, you graduate McLeod, Zola, and Pranagas. What does this team have? Who Who's going to step up? And I take in that as this program has done in years past, it has developed guys, and guys are going to step up, and it's going to be a special year here, and I've been saying it for a while now, and I still believe that, even when they were 0-5, but they got it, you know, we'll see how one conference play comes, as I said earlier, it's 0-0 zero, zero in, that, in that regard, so they'll have to prove their way there. Well, that'll do it for the post-game show presented by Holiday Inn Express, Rockville Center in Lindbrook, Andrew Fertitta, and Jason Fasina on hand, Jason my name is Andrew Fertitta. <laughs> and uh, final score on the night, as you said before, 74-58. to Malloy gets their first win of the season. They look at 1-5 on the schedule and look to keep it going next time out. Thank you for everyone for joining in, and have a good night.